Heavy fighting continues in Ukraine, but talks aimed at ending the war have come to a halt. Moscow says it's willing to continue the peace talks as Ukrainian officials take a harder stance. Well, let's get the latest on the situation. Uh, let's speak to our correspondent in Moscow, Julia Chapman. Uh, Julia, good afternoon. Just the latest uh, developments on the, on the peace talks. What's the state of play? Well, right now they are not going forward at all. They haven't been for the past 10 days or so. That has been confirmed by both the Russian side and the Ukrainian side. For several weeks they were holding pretty regular contact, at least virtually, occasionally meeting in person as well. Uh, but now things have ground to a halt with both sides accusing the other of failing to engage seriously in this process. Uh, Russia says that Ukraine has not responded to its demands, that it put forward the last time negotiators met in person, which was in Istanbul over a month ago. And Ukraine says that Russia is trying to use the negotiating process purely for the purposes of uh, domestic propaganda to show the Russian people that it's been trying to negotiate, but that Ukraine simply isn't engaging in good faith. Uh, Russia, of course, denies that. It says it is ready to go back to the negotiating table, but the ball is in Ukraine's court, and it firmly accuses Ukraine uh, of stalling this process. But Ukraine says in order for any kind of peace agreement to be reached, there would have to be a full withdrawal of Russian troops from Ukrainian territory, not just the places where they've made gains in the last three months, but also from the entire Donbass region of eastern Ukraine and from Crimea itself, which Russia annexed from Ukraine in 2014. Now, the importance, I understand there's talks going on uh, w w between Vladimir Putin and Belarus. The importance of this meeting between them in relation to this ongoing war, what is it? Well, Belarus has been a pretty firm ally for President Vladimir Putin. Uh, the two countries are very much mutually dependent because Belarus needs uh, the bigger economy of Russia to uh, deepen its cooperation. The two countries have been working on this so-called integration process for the last few years. Politically, Alexander Lukashenko, the Belarusian leader, is very dependent on the Kremlin. And right now, the Kremlin doesn't have a lot of allies, so Belarus has been pretty significant for it as well. Uh, although traditionally it has held most of the power in this relationship. Remember, back in February, part of Russia's uh, action in Ukraine was in fact launched from Belarusian territory, where Russian troops were holding joint military exercises with their Bel Belarusian counterpart. Uh, so Minsk has received sanctions just like Russia has uh, by a number of Western countries, which say that mm, Belarus has been uh, helping Russia in this uh, endeavor, the so-called special military operation, as the Kremlin insists that we call it here. Uh, both countries have faced sanctions. They have been talking together today, the two presidents, about how to avoid those sanctions, how to lessen their impact. Impact. They both insist uh, that this is in fact an opportunity for their countries, that they will find new avenues for trade, they will develop their domestic industries. Uh, and they've been very much hitting back at sanctions as well, which they say are the cause for the rising global prices, uh, which they insist are hurting the West more than they're hurting Russia and Belarus. Okay, and meanwhile, Ukraine says the talks, the talks dialogue uh, are the only way, way, way forward. But the sanctions are biting as well in terms of imports uh, into Russia. There's been a kind of a decline. Tell us about that, uh, Julia. That's right. There have been a number of consequences economically of the sanctions introduced. One of them uh, has been a decline in uh, Russian imports because there are very few countries now uh, where Russia is able to freely do business. Of course, its exports remain very strong at the moment because Russia is a big resource economy. Uh, so it is still shipping its gas and oil to many countries around the world, including Western ones, uh, which are trying to wean themselves off of Russian energy, seeing now uh, that they are too dependent on the country and that makes their sanctions less effective. There are fewer areas that they can target and hurt the Russian uh, economy. But there are areas, indeed, uh, we are seeing logistics, supply chains becoming even more complicated. There were already global supply chain issues uh, with the rest of the country, uh, with the rest of the world because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, but now they are being complicated even further for Russia by the sanctions by uh, Russian 
Russian uh, trucking companies as well as Belarusian ones being prevented uh, from operating in Europe. Flights as well. Uh, Russian airlines can't enter European airspace or most of North America either. Uh, so we are certainly seeing a fall in imports back to pandemic levels. Early 2020 was the last time we saw this and Russia is accusing uh, so-called unfriendly countries of being the cause. Now, finally, Julia, I mean, on the ground, as of style now in Ukraine is in the hands of, of Russians. They've taken over. What's the latest there uh, before you go? Well, that's right. Russia now fully controls the Azovstal uh, steel factory in Mariupol, which was the last uh, holdout, the last spot of resistance by Ukrainian fighters in that city, which has almost been razed to the ground by Russia. Uh, Russia now controls that city and that factory. And more than 2,400 Ukrainian fighters are now in Russian custody, having surrendered uh, over the past few days. Their fate is not now clear. Uh, we understand that they could be facing a tribunal in separatist areas of eastern Ukraine. The West fears that that would not be a fair trial for these fighters. Uh, some Russian lawmakers are even calling for them to face the death penalty, which does in fact uh, apply in those breakaway so-called separatist republics of eastern Ukraine. So big concerns for what happens to these fighters now, more than 2,000 of them. And in the meantime, Russia and Russian soldiers are demining the Azovstal factory because there were some booby traps left in place by Ukrainian fighters uh, as they left that factory. Thank you very much, Julia Chapman. They are our correspondent in the Moscow with the latest about that ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict.